Welcome back to my channel everyone. Today we'll be talking about the gluteus maximus muscle and what the research says are the best exercises for targeting this muscle group. Let's take a look. The gluteus maximus muscle is actually one of your largest, strongest muscles in the whole body. It's actually located in the buttock region and actually forms the majority of that buttock. It is responsible for hip extension, hip abduction, and hip external rotation. So one would think any exercise that targets the muscle or gets the hip to move in any of these three directions will target this muscle. So we've taken a look at the most commonly prescribed exercises by physiotherapists, chiropractors, and strength coaches alike to target this muscle group and actually taking a look at which ones are actually effective for strengthening the gluteus maximus. But before we get into that, a little bit of anatomy. So the gluteus maximus actually attaches onto many different structures. This doesn't just attach onto the structures within the butt. Not only does it attach to your ilium and your femur, but this muscle attaches to your thoracolumbar fascia, your erector spinae aponeurosis, it attaches onto your gluteus medius, it attaches onto your sacral tuberous ligaments, it attaches onto your dorsal sacral iliac ligaments, it attaches to your coccyx and your sacrum. So there's a lot of different structures that it can attach to, so it's no wonder why this muscle is so implicated in so many different conditions and how strengthening this muscle can benefit you so much. In addition to its active role in hip extension, hip abduction, and external rotation, one of its most pivotal roles is stabilizing the pelvis and hip during movements. In this regard, it acts as a global stabilizer using both eccentric and isometric contractions. In terms of stability, it does four main things. The first one is that it stabilizes the low back through its connection to the erector spinae aponeurosis and the thoracolumbar fascia. It stabilizes the sacroiliac joint as the muscle crosses that joint and offers compressive forces as it contracts. It helps to stabilize the lumbosacral region by co-contracting with the psoas major. And finally, it stabilizes the knee through its ITB attachment. All right, so next we're going to be taking a look at what the research actually has to say about some of the most commonly prescribed exercises. We'll be looking at exercises like the glute bridge, the clamshell, the squat, the Bulgarian split squat, deadlifts. Which of these exercises are actually effective for targeting your gluteus maximus? So let's dig into some of these studies. Now, before we can actually digest what the studies have to offer, we have to first understand one outcome measure that most of these studies I'm taking a look at today use, and that is MVIC percentage which is short for maximum voluntary isometric contraction. This is a metric that is a standardized measure of muscle strength and it's used by a lot of studies in order to establish whether or not an exercise is effective. Basically, the higher the MVIC percentage, the more it will engage that muscle group that we're taking a look at. So there's one study by Nito et al. 2020 took a look at the most commonly prescribed exercises for the gluteus maximus. And they took a look at which of these exercises had the highest MVIC percentage. And contrary to what most people think, deadlifts were actually dead on the list. And contrary to what most people think, what they found is that the front step up exercise actually had the highest amount of MVIC. This exercise had a peak MVIC of 169%, which blew deadlifts out of the water with deadlifts being at 64% and stiff leg deadlifts being at 40%. Next on the list were a few other exercises that were variations of the front step up, including the diagonal step up and the crossover step up. Split squats were actually at 70%, and then the normal lunge was actually at 66%. So as you can see, a lot of these exercises that are used to target the glutes were completely outshined by the front step up, with the front step up being nearly two to three times more effective at getting a higher MVIC percentage compared to some of these other commonly prescribed exercises. Staying within the fitness space, Nita Al did another study that was a systematic review, which took a look at a bunch of different studies to and cultivate that data and dissected them to understand which of the exercises were actually most effective for targeting the gluteus maximus. So some of the exercises that made it to their list include hip thrusters and American hip thrusters. They found that the barbell hip thrust exercise had a peak MVIC percentage of 216%. And they also found that the American hip thrust, which is a modification of your conventional barbell hip thrust, was at 200% peak MVIC. To contrast to some other exercises that you might be familiar with, they also found that the back squat only had 130% peak MVIC in comparison to these other exercises. So while a lot of people are doing barbell squats to target their quads and gluteus maximus muscles, you can clearly see that if you take an exercise that's much more isolated for the gluteus maximus, that it is much 
more beneficial. Now we're going to move on to the oh so popular Bulgarian split squat, which has been running rampant on social media. A study by Mouse Hun looked at different variations of the Bulgarian split squat and actually took a look at how much MVIC percentage the gluteus maximus was being activated. And they found that in all variations, it ranged between 71 to 79% MVIC. This exercise was much more beneficial for the quadriceps and the hamstrings instead, with those muscles ha ranking higher in MVIC percentage compared to the gluteus maximus muscles. So what's the take home message with these exercises that you find in the fitness industry? Basically, if you're looking to do gluteus maximus focused training, your top exercises are going to be the hip thrust, the American hip thrust, as well as the front step up and its variation. That said, that's not to say that exercises like deadlift, the Bulgarian split squat or the squat are not beneficial at all. The benefit might be that all these other exercises target other muscle groups at the same time. So if you're looking for a much more well-rounded program, doing these other exercises are still effective at targeting the gluteus maximus, but it might not be the most effective at targeting them. But meanwhile, they will still be developing your other muscle groups at the same time. So when it comes to choosing which exercise you want to pick, it really depends on your current workout goals. Next, we're gonna be going over some commonly prescribed physiotherapy exercises because these exercises are prescribed in the early stages of rehab in order to rehabilitate the gluteus maximus muscle and the other hip muscles as well. All of these is a famous clamshell exercise. However, digging deep into the research, I found an article by Macbeth and they found that the gluteus maximus only had an MVIC percentage of 34.2%. This is so little compared to all those other exercises. Hell, even your regular deadlift had nearly twice as much MVIC percentage for the gluteus maximus muscle compared to this clamshell exercise. Likewise, another commonly prescribed exercise in the physiotherapy setting is the infamous glute bridge, which really is a misnomer. Now you would think theoretically that the glute bridge is very mechanically similar to the hip thrust exercise, that it will have very similar results to the hip thrust. But the research actually shows Otherwise, a study by McAdam actually showed that the gluteus maximus only had an MVIC percentage of 41.5%, once again being outranked by the deadlift exercise, which we already established wasn't a really great exercise for the gluteus maximus muscle. Likewise, similar results were found in the single leg glute bridge as well, which is just as widely prescribed by physiotherapists, chiropractors, and medical doctors alike. A study by Leheka actually showed that it only had about 51% MVIC percentage, which is just a little bit better than the bilateral legged glute bridge exercise. So what does this all mean? If you're a physiotherapist and you're prescribing these exercises, these exercises aren't actually the best exercises for leveling up your gluteus maximus muscles. Likewise, if you're a patient and you prescribe these exercises and you found that you couldn't feel your glutes engage, well, it's because you probably wouldn't have because the MVIC percentage is so much lower compared to all these other bigger exercises. Now, does that mean that these exercises are useless? No. There is a time and a place for these exercises. Namely speaking, these are best prescribed when activating the gluteus maximus is conventionally too painful in all those other exercises. Because it has a lower MVIC percentage, they might be a better option for you to do because you're not going to engage them as much, which means you're probably not going to produce as much pain if these are the pain producers in your body. All right, so that wraps up my video about which exercises are great for activating the gluteus maximus and which ones aren't so hot. But that's not to say that those exercises are useless. There's a time and place and it really depends on your exercise goals. You can find a link to all the studies that I mentioned in this video in the captions below. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments as well. If you're new to my channel, be sure to hit subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see y'all next time. Peace.